What's happening in the prestige market? We are joined by Jack Henderson from Henderson Advocacy. Hello, Jack. How are you? Third time round with you. I know, I know, I know. I feel like a local now on the Paris and Bass cast. That's it. Um, and it's good to see someone's face that isn't uh, isn't someone that's inside of our bubble of five kilometres at the moment, right? <laughs> that's oh, true. No, it's as good as it gets at the moment. Okay. Hey, that's right. Things are good. Things are very good. I mean, there's a lot of people struggling in the world, I think. And um, fortunately for us, you know, the property market all around, I think, is is, is doing good things. So um, no complaints from my, uh, from my corner, that's for sure. That's good to Very hear. Good. So give us a bit of background about yourself for those of you uh, that might not have uh, heard from you before. What is Henderson Advocacy all about? Um, so we're essentially a property buyer's agency. Um, we like to call ourselves advocates. It sounds a little bit sexier and uh, more Buy intellectual. Agent. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so uh, my, my, I guess, uh, story is, you know, I was a, an investor, uh, built my own portfolio, portfolio and then essentially transitioned into, you know, helping other people for free and then thought, well, if I help people for free, why don't I charge people and uh, do it for a living? So, um, yes, worked under another firm for a little while and then uh, sort of late last year, early this year, started up my own business and uh, that was Henderson Advocacy and now we've got sort of two offices and 25 staff. So it's all happened very quickly. Wow, it all happened very quickly. <laughs> Yeah. It has, yeah. That's what I was saying prior to, to going live. The uh, the year of sobriety I'm doing at the moment is obviously paying dividends because something's working. Yeah, that's it's it. all momentum what we're talking about, so one after the other. That's it. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about the, the trends that you're currently seeing in the uh, the prestige market. We'll break it down with uh, uh, you know owner-occupiers and investors um, and even overseas buyers. Uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing currently? Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's probably the same for you guys, like the property markets, if we can use, use the word market for the, say, the whole of Sydney is, is extremely strong. Like, I don't know too many marketplaces individually that are not doing well at the moment, doesn't matter where you are, you know, you're in Sydney, you're in Newcastle, you're in Melbourne, you're in Brisbane, like all the marketplaces are doing very, very well. And that, you know, comes, I think, to, to a, a few reasons, obviously, the, the lack of inventory at the moment is uh is one of the big contributors there's a lot of buyers in there as a lot of pent-up demand from the first sort of lockdown and that's kept flowing through because there hasn't been a lot of inventory to, to keep up with the buyer demand um and then again like we're in you know super super low interest rate environments um and people have got nothing else to spend their money on at the moment so it's you know mm -hmm. let's either do a renovation or, or upgrade a house or buy a holiday home or you know buy an investment um you know all of those things are contributing and just putting more and more fuel on the fire um, and in, in the prestige market I mean everyone classifies prestige as a different sort of price point but in Sydney you've probably got a few different segments all the markets that we work in in the east and the inner west and, and the north shore we, you know different segments of the market but anywhere from sort of the two to four million range is generally that sort of young family coming out of their apartment or buying their first sort of family home and and you know, we've, we've probably seen anywhere from sort of 25 to 50% growth in that market in the last sort of six to eight months. Um, and then again, once you start getting five, 10, 15, $20 million over, um, you know, people are making 50% in the last eight months. You know, we bought a property last year for 10 million bucks in Vaucluse. Um, that was just at the start of COVID. Um, and that property just resold over the last couple of weeks for just under 15 million. So, you know, it's essentially 40 40 plus percent in, in, in less than 12 months. So um, that's obviously an extreme case of it. But, you know, it was another property yesterday that we actually missed for a client in, in Ramwick. Um, they bought that in 2019 for 2.1, spent 250 on a reno. So they're in for say 2350 and it just sold last night for 3.4. So, you know, right. you're talking 30 plus percent in. That's huge, that's huge growth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Again, I, um, mm. As Sorry, you did said, you? it is it is just the, the, the how tight the stock is. Like mm. there's not a lot of choice for people to to go with and whatever is coming is going very quickly. Yeah, no one really knows how long this is going to last, right? So if people have a compelling reason to buy, um, you know, whether they need to be in a school catchment zone for their kids going to school next year, whether they've sold and they need to upsize or, you know, they're sick of renting or whatever the reason is, if someone has a compelling reason to buy, um, then they need to buy. So... Yeah, that um, won't stop them. And especially yeah. uh, 
after COVID last year, the property market bounced back. I think people have the confidence now to buy during COVID lockdown as well. Mm. So I think that, yeah, mm. that's helping. Exactly. And then, you know, the government's put, what, 200 billion plus of, of you know, sort of cash into the, into the, the economy um, with quantitative easing. And, and as soon as you put an extra dollar into the economy, that the, the assets that are already in the economy are all, you know, obviously worth more money now because the dollar that's in there is worth less. Yeah. Um, so that, that that's another contributor, right? It, Quantitative easing generally, um, flat, you know, or, or um, increases what, the value of, of assets. Yeah, I think what's the icing on the cake is a low interest rate as well. Banks are quite aggressive at the moment. Valuations are coming in strong, so financing mm. is is strong as well, which is helping the market. Which you'll see. Hundred well. percent. Mm. Yeah, and look, I mean, the marketplaces that we work in um, are the most affluent marketplaces in Australia, and they're people with the, the the highest incomes or the biggest businesses, and they're spending the most money on property and. Um, mm. You know, for a lot of industries at the moment, they're doing very, very well. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of industries doing doing badly, but there's also, you know, for every industry that's doing bad, there's there's an industry that's doing extremely well off the back of it. And right. again, that's that that's fueling the fire. Um, and you know, the way I look at it is, it, I, I sort of feel property in these areas has actually been quite cheap in the past. When you you look at where it is and what it has to offer, mm-hmm. um, in comparison to the rest of Australia, it, it's been quite cheap. So maybe it's just leveling out to where it actually yeah. should be mm-hmm. in comparison to the people who live in these areas and the incomes that they actually do earn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, someone who's got a net worth of $150 million spending 30 million bucks on a home is not a big deal, right? It's one fifth yeah. of what you're worth, which is generally not a big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, same thing if you're, if you're a doctor or, you know, a young family that's got a combined income of $250,000, dollars $300,000, that's a, that's a lot of disposable income. So having a three or $4 million mortgage is not really going to put a huge dent in that income. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and also more people are staying at home now. And I think people are looking for Realizing big, the bigger space. houses. That we're seeing a lot of innovations are being done, extensions as well in, in our part of the area. So mm. which you'll probably be seeing in your area as well. Yeah. it's huge yeah yeah it's huge the um you know the, the people who now are realizing that hey we do need that extra room for a study because we're both working from home and one of us is working from the main bedroom one of us is working from the kitchen it's not really functional right and how how long this is going to last for no one actually knows so it's really making people reconsider their their um, living situation so especially people living in apartments um you know kids at home now where they used to be able to get out and go to the park and send them on their on their bikes or go to the beach they can't really do that anymore so more space more space more space is the thing yes. that everyone needs so they're either you know adding a second level to their property or doing an extension or reconfiguring the floor plan or if they don't have the ability to do that they've got to sell and and, and buy something else yeah, mm. I was talking to one of the pool builders. They said we're booked up for another two years. So that's, that's how much work we've got. <laughs> there you go. Off the roof at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's crazy. Adding. I think everyone's the same, right? Like everyone who's in that sort of the property sector, whether it be building, whether it be agent selling, buying, um, you know, tradies. Like it, everyone is super busy. Yeah. Um, and how how long it lasts? Nobody nobody knows, right? Nice. And what we're talking offline is that with the expats, um, yes, they can't come back, but are you seeing a lot, you're getting a lot of inquiries, um, a lot of telephone that they do want to come back and look for properties or vacating yeah, there's, that they have. There here. is. There's there's quite a lot of people who are living overseas with the intention to come home as soon as they're able to, um, yeah. which has changed, you know, since COVID, right? Most people didn't really want to come home if they were living overseas. They're enjoying earning a lot of a lot of these countries. It's obviously tax-free incomes and enjoying that expat life. But now seeing how the world's changed, there's a lot of people going, well, as soon as we can get home, let's get home. So they're preparing for that um, and, you know, wanting to get into the marketplace, buy a property that they'll rent out until they do return home and then move into it when they, when they get home. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's definitely increased. I think it will increase more with uh, when the international borders open as soon as, you know, people internationally, whether they're Australian residents or not, can can come to Australia because they've seen really had on a grand scale, we've dealt with this compared to other nations. Um, you know, I can see a huge influx of, of Chinese money coming into mm. uh, into Australia for sure. Mm. Yeah. If you were to put it into percentage right now, like what, what would you say uh, owner occupiers, investors and overseas buyers, where is the trend? Where's the majority of money being spent on or from? It's owner occupiers for sure, right? That, that, that's where the majority of our client base is. Um, and then obviously the investors are, are there in most markets. So um, I would say most, it's probably 70, 20, 10 for us, like 70% owner occupiers, 20% investors, and then 10% of whether they're expats or, you know, yeah, uh, 
di- different buyers. Yeah. And what are you seeing in the market? A lot of off-market deals happening in your in your area, or a lot of properties that they want to test the market. No, nah, we're we're buying quite a lot off market. Um, and one of the biggest reasons for that is because obviously to sell your property in the east, you're probably looking at between eight and ten grand on real estate and domain.com and, and photos and styling and all the rest of it. And if they can't get a huge amount of buyers through their property um, mm. because of the one-on-one inspections and, and all they're going to do is get a shitload of internet inquiry, um, then for a lot of vendors, it doesn't make sense, right? Most vendors have a dollar in their in their mind they will sell for. And if they hit that level, they're happy to sell. So a lot of the agents at the moment are running soft campaigns or off-market campaigns where they have their qualified buyers. They, they understand what level the vendor is at and it's just about piecing that deal together. So, you know, the one I mentioned yesterday that we tried to buy, that was a, that, that's old pre-market. It was meant to go to market, but it's old pre-market. There was only two buyers that saw it, mm. um, was myself and, and someone else. And you know, it sold for 3.4, which was well above where they expected it to sell. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's what's happening um, in our market here. Everything has gone to market. I think. Yeah, I think creating the competition. Yeah, the they're, difference they're... In, the, in the two markets, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, some there's still a fair amount of property going to market, but I would say it's it's there's a lot more off market now than than there was. It's probably 50-50, I would say, of off market on market. It probably makes mm-hmm. sense because the price points you're talking about, there's only specific buyers that can really, you know, get achieve, to that, yeah, yeah, get to that level as well. So you you, you got a targeted uh, a database there. Yeah, well, I mean, look, you can get three or four hundred internet inquiry off off you know one one listing in the east, um, mm-hmm. and between fifty and hundred inspections for a good quality property over yeah. a two or three week campaign. So there's still a lot of buyers in the marketplace for these particular properties. But again, with a, a good agent doesn't necessarily need to meet the 50 buyers where 45 of them were tire kickers and five yeah. of them were really serious buyers, right? So mm-hmm. if an agency or an agent can qualify their buyer really well and understand who their hot buyers are at the moment, they don't need to run up to market. They can do exactly the same thing with with no marketing, you know, it's understanding who the buyers are, matching those buyers to, to the individual properties, and you only need two buyers to, to create a, a super competitive environment. You know, most most auctions are the same, right? You'll have 10 registrations and three people that bid. Yeah. So <laughs> it's understanding who those three people are and not necessarily having to go down the auction, auction route. Mm. 100%. And what would you say would be the biggest challenge? One is definitely the, le- the number of listings available or opportunities available. What, what's another challenge that you're currently seeing in the market? Is there a challenge? Um, yeah, look, uh, in- inventory is obviously one. I always wish there was more property to buy, right? The more property there is to buy, the more, the more we can buy. Well, we can connect. Um, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you know, I, I, to be honest, and this is probably bizarre but we don't i don't really have any challenges especially as a business at the moment like we've, we've got a lot of clients we've got a really really strong client book and, and we're buying anywhere from sort of two to four properties a week so um you know ideally i'd like to eat at a cafe every morning and not have to uh yeah. have to eat at home and that's a challenge you know that's not, a challenge. Wear a, not wear a mask and all the rest of it but if you look at it on a grand scale they're not real challenges right like if you, mm. you know, compare it to what's happening in Afghan at the moment, it's it's, yes. it's very small and 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 uh, not important. So no, like I mean, if we're looking at the marketplace, like inventory is one of the things that we're hearing constantly. Mm. Um, it's very competitive, so you know, yeah. What what are your predictions of what what do you think the next twelve months holds for us? When we saw how much the market rebound last time after the yeah. lockdown finishing, do you think the same will happen again, or do you think it'll probably you know go double or what? What do you? What do you? I don't. Think? I don't know. And, and anyone who says they know is full of shit, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. Like, you, nobody knows what's uh, what's going to happen tomorrow or next year or next month or in ten years' time. Like, as long as you use history as a good indicator, that property mm. generally does quite well in these areas. And there's there's fundamental reasons for that. Then, you know, that if you're buying for the long term and you're buying because you need to buy for, for family reasons, yeah. um then, you know, I'm, I'm quite confident you'll do well. I think, you know, what, once the once the borders open mm. um, back up and you can go and do other stuff, like I probably think whether that's in six months or six years, who knows, but I probably think that people are going to have better things on their mind than buying property, right? They're going to want to, they're going to want to go overseas, they want to go on holidays, they want to stop thinking about real estate and it's in every every single headline that you read is either COVID or real estate markets going mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that, that's probably going to have an impact. Like real estate has been everyone's on everyone's mind for the last sort of 18 months. Um, 
I know for me, as soon as the borders open, I'm out of the country and I'm going to go enjoy something else for a little while. Yeah, um, yeah so, but, but who knows? Like, that, yeah. I don't know. Property, I don't know. You, you will win. You hold it. That's you will right. <laughs> well, yeah, history's told us that. That's all right. And then if, uh, unless all of a sudden everyone wants to go live in the centre of Australia next to Uluru and all of a sudden not want to live next to the water and the cafes and the beaches and er everything that people enjoy... Yeah. Um, then I reckon you're going to be pretty safe in uh, in Sydney property, that's for sure. Absolutely. Um, and uh, for those that are watching and wanting to engage your services, can you tell us a little bit more about um, what areas you cover? I know we've uh, you, we've connected with Daniel from uh, the Hills area that covers the Hills area. So, yes, uh, yes, we'll have a we'll have a Hills Hills office very very soon. Um, yeah. Look, the majority of our buying happens in sort of the inner ring of Sydney, so the eastern suburbs, the lower north, the upper north, and the northern beaches, the inner west, and and obviously now the hills. Um, and then we've got an office in Newcastle as well, which services the, New, the Newcastle region and, and Central Coast. Um, yeah, and look, uh, one of the biggest reasons people are coming to us at the moment is. It's very difficult for an individual to get out there and look at property. Um, and it's very, very difficult to, to get access to the, the property that we have because uh, of the relationships and the amount of property that we buy and, and obviously the, the manpower that we have, it gives our clients an advantage in the upper hand in, in, in such a competitive marketplace that they couldn't really do themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, look. Well, looking I forward to the it's... Hills office. That, that'll be great. <laughs> Thank you. Mate, that'll, uh, that'll be open in uh, Q4 of this year. So there you go. Oh, very good. <laughs> you go. You've heard it first. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, any final words before we wrap up? No, I think. Um, covered it all. Uh, look, uh, yeah, I think we've covered it all. Like, you know, the marketplace is super competitive and a lot of people are, are putting the, the buying thing on hold because, you know, it's too expensive and it's too, it's too hard and, um, look, I can't, I can't see the property market having a huge, you know, fall off a cliff. The, the, the largest property price drops in Australia's history are, are less than 10%. So, um, you know, we could have between 5 and 10% before the end of the year. So, um, yeah. you know, our advice to people is if you're in a financial position to be able to buy and then be able to hold that property for the short to medium term, um, that's all that really matters, right? You've just got to trust that it will be more expensive in 10 years time than it is right now. Well, you shouldn't buy property. You should go, you know, go to the casino or, or buy some shares in a company or something. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. You've got to hold. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again and sharing your insights. Anyone that's watching, if there's any other questions that we can answer, feel free to send them through. More than happy to uh, answer them. And now we are also on all of our podcast apps. So excited to finally achieve that. We set that goal in 2020 lockdown. <laughs> We're finally there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and a whole heap of others. So you can enjoy this uh, at, at any time. Listen or watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the options there. Thank you so much Beautiful. for joining us, Jack. Thanks, guys. Take Thanks, care. Yeah. Speak to you soon. See ya.